Well, ahoy, rovers. Uh, we're here at the boat shed, and the weather is beginning to change. Um, it's a beautiful day, don't get me wrong. There's no wind, it's nice and sunny, but the geese are flying south in big numbers, and uh, the temperatures are beginning to get cool. Like, right now, we're, we're maybe 12 degrees, and 12 degrees is the minimum temperature I need for epoxy to kick off. The optimum temperature is actually 22 degrees for the type of epoxy I have, which is, uh, it's called East System. It's it's like West System, but it's a Canadian version, I believe. Anyway, uh, it's not like I've been shirking, you know, my boat building duties. I've actually been going at it pretty much uh, seven days a week, every day. And uh, for a lot of those days, I get help from Mrs. Rover, which is great and actually uh, really speeds things up, but I can't afford to take even one day off until I get the boat turned over. And this is the state we're at right now. So in the last episode, you saw me double up the bottom and that went really well, I think. You know, I'll be taking off a lot of the clamps today. But we also, as I had mentioned, we have a little issue and the issue is the frames right here. So you can see there's a gap right there. That gap is one inch. And there's a gap here on the final frame and that gap is half an inch. And it's the same on the other side. It's the very same. So the boat hull is symmetrical. We're looking at half an inch here. And we're looking at one inch right here at this frame. Apart from that, the rest of the frames are really good. You can see everything lies nicely. So when I reported this to Andy, the naval architect, Andy uh, took a look at the drawings and saw, in fact, uh, they were two mistakes. But what had happened is we had altered the bottom of the Wave Rover 650 to make it, um, to make it really easier to build without affecting any of the performance of the boat. And when that happened, that change didn't make its way out to these temporary frames. Uh, Andy assures me that it is, uh, it was corrected that very day that I reported it. And when he looked at the, f at the drawings, you know, he saw that indeed it should have been exactly one inch off as it is and half an inch up there. So uh, in, in effect, you know, it kind of tells me that in a way I've been, I've been doing a pretty good job on being accurate. So, so that's good. Uh, so what I'm going to do today is effect a fix on that, and it's not going to be that difficult, but uh, not to worry if you're one of those folks who are interested in building the 650, the plans actually have the correction written right into them. But uh, it's, it's probably going to take me just a couple hours to fix these frames while they're in place. It won't be a big deal. Anyway, that's, that's on today's agenda. agenda. Also, I want to make sure that the strong back has been put in in such a way that when we roll the boat over, uh, we can remove the frames. So there's a few little items I have to do to the frames to make them uh, stable and yet removable after we roll the boat over. And apart from that, we are getting ready to put the final little bit on. Uh, I won't get to that in this video other than I will laminate up the transom and I'll explain why you really don't want to put the transom on at the beginning, why you want to wait until later to do it. All right, so we're going to put this one by four on. I've lined it up to the little mark that I've set with a batten. I'm just going to move it out to where it intersects the plating, hold it tightly in place. And looks very good. Okay, so that's the upper portion done. Do the same on the other two frames and we're in business. Now, after that, I have to do the lower portion. Same thing, really. So all I really had to do in this lower one was just put a little spacer so that this uh, improvement will line up with this spacer up here. So then just line up the tip and then push it tight against the plating. 
And that's all we really need to do. That's it. So this, this frame is now back to where it should be. So what I'm doing right here is laying out the lines for the transom on this piece of plywood. And this is identical to how I laid it out for the temporary frames. And if you're not sure how that's done, check out my video. Uh, I think it's called Lofting for Beginners. I'll put a link uh, right here. All right, so I'm using my construction diagram and I've put some lines on here. Now it's just a matter of connecting them. Now the transom is now laid out. So as always, I've put in a center line. I've marked it as center line. I've put in a water line as a reference line. And then what I've done is I have marked out the rest of the transom and then I've added about an inch as a margin that I'll cut on because I don't want it cut to the exact size because I'm laminating it with a second piece so that we have a double thickness for our transom. And so I just want a little extra that I can possibly put screws through or clamp with, and I'll just make the line there. This will be a little extra. This is the actual bottom of the transom, this line. So I've got an extra inch, and at the top, I have about half that distance. So I'm saving plywood by doing this, but probably more importantly, I'm saving a lot of glue by not doing this. Now remove the excess epoxy and then use it to wet out the second layer of the transom. So here you're watching me apply a coat of thickened epoxy. So this is really the glue, and you only need to do this to one of the layers 
of the transom. Now after you finish spreading out that thickened epoxy with a spreader, that's just a general spreading. Next thing you want to do is get your notched spreader and use that to really make sure that the epoxy is evenly spread out over the whole surface. Well, as you can see from this, it's a combination of lead weights, which I have a lot of here, and uh, that's really good. Now, if I didn't have those lead weights, I would probably use water containers or uh, weight lifting weights. Now, I've also used screws with big fender washers, and I've put them in outside of what is actually the transom lines. And then up on the top side where I have some room, I, was, I managed to get in a number of clamps. So all in all, we've done a pretty good job of laminating up these two sheets and they'll form the transom. Well, this is the transom, it's all glued up and we could trim it at this point but I'm just going to hold off and give it another day for the glues to set up because really uh, the temperatures are not that warm right now and we can use the extra time and on top of that there's no big rush because we still have to put the side chines on and even when the chines are on 
we still don't want to put the transom off. We're going to hold off in the transom until almost the very end. And the reason for that is because you want to be able to have access to the inside of the boat. And the reason for that is because we have to remove a good deal of the braces we don't need anymore. And also a portion of the strong back will be removed. And that's to allow us to be able to slide the boat off and roll it over. So we're going to get that done before we put the transom on, but that's still a couple of steps away. Let's give a great big wave rover cheer. To all those adventurous builders out there who have purchased plans for the Wave Rover 650. I mean, we have gone totally international in less than a week. We have builders from France, from the United Kingdom, from the United States and Canada. Pretty exciting stuff. Now, I'd like to take a moment to honor two new benefactors to our benefactors bulkhead. Duncan White and Aline Sisko. Now these folks have made a donation of $100 US or more and their names will be going on the bulkhead inside Wave Rover and will be traveling with me on our voyage as we circumnavigate. Much appreciated. I'd also like to welcome on board Diane Briston who is our new patron and if you're not sure what being a patron is, check out the link in the video description. In the next episode, we managed to get the lower chines fitted. And as always, Rovers, thanks for watching.